One, two, three, katam. Welcome to another episode of Quarren TV here at Masifunda Learner Development. It's all me out on a lockdown. I am still your host with the most Uklavi Sozweni. Right behind me, we have our band rehearsing for a new album that our youth choir is going to record. Today, our presenters are going to take you to a kaleidoscope of events that are taking place. Watch and learn. Cheers. Come again. Welcome to your viewers at home. I'm your host, Silly Zuek Lakata, right here on your favorite show, Quarant TV. It's your miyako, Yenge Lockdown. Right, so on today's episode, we're going to be reciting some poetry. Yes, poetry. Words build, words destroy. Words are beautiful, words are ugly. Poetry is a mixture of words, creating a picture that can never be erased. It's time for Massey Poetry. The title of my poem is This Is Me. This is me born by different people. This is me looking white, but trust me, I'm black. I know I have big eyes, but they do not describe who I am. I know I have light skin, but that doesn't mean I'm white. This is me. Do you know how it feels being judged by looks? Do you know how it feels being called by names of things you're not only because you look like them? Do you know how it feels explaining the real you? This is me. I've been explaining, describing, proving, but no one believes me. I've been crying, screaming, speaking, shouting, but no one understands me. But now it is time for change. Time for me to be me. Time for me to let things be. This is me. My name is Yamanatim Kaz. The title of my poem is My Time During Lockdown. My time during lockdown is going slow but a day. Time is going slowly during this lockdown. We are scared of this disease but we have to fight. But I want it to end. It goes by until it ends. There are many figures of speech in the world. Most are not literal. For example, metaphor, simile, alliteration. Here comes Zolisa Mtakriso with figures of speech. Good day everyone. My name is Zolisa Mtakriso, also known as Usis Soli. I'm sure some of you have missed me. So on today's episode, we'll be focusing on figures of speech. So what is a figure of speech? A figure of speech is an expression of words that are not used for their literal meaning. Okay, I'm sure some of you have uh, heard about uh, a few figures of speech. So we're going to look at the ones that some of you are familiar, familiar with. A simile. So what is a simile? A simile is a comparison between two things using like or as. So let's look at an example of how it is used. She eats like a bird. So what is being compared here? It's her eating and the bird. And here we see that they use the word like. Another example is he is blind as a bat. Do you see where the comparison is? So in this example, they have used his blindness and compared it to a bat. And they've used S as a comparison. Okay, so now let's look at our second figure of speech, a metaphor. So what is a metaphor? A metaphor is a comparison between two things that are not alike but have something in common. So now let us look at an example of that. Laughter is the best medicine. We all know that when you laugh it is usually when you are happy and medicine 
makes you feel better. So here they have compared laughter to medicine. And another example is life is a journey. So we all know that in life you go through things and trials and tribulations and they've compared life to a journey because of how life is moving. Okay, so now we're going to move on to some examples that you may have heard about or you haven't heard about. Okay, now let us look at our next two examples. So the first one is an hyperbole. So what is an hyperbole? It is an exaggeration to emphasize or create an uh, effect. So the main word here is exaggeration. So let's look at, at the examples. I have told you a million times. Do you think you can tell a person something, the same thing a million times? I doubt you can even make it to a hundred. So the meaning of the sentence, it means I have told you many times. Okay, let's look at the second example. I am hungry, I could eat a horse. Do you think you can eat a, a horse at once? I doubt so. So this means I am very hungry. Okay, now let us look at the second one. Personification. So what is personification? It is giving animals or things human qualities. Okay, let's look at the examples below. The hyena laughed. So, which human quality was given to the hyena? Laughed. Because human can, humans can laugh too. Okay, let's look at the second example. The rain danced on the, on the roof. So, on this example, you can see that they've given the rain a human quality, which is danced. Okay, now let us look at our last examples. So, over here, we've got alliteration. So, what is alliteration? Alliteration is a repetition of letters or sounds at the beginning of close connected words. So let us look at an example. Wandile wanted warm water. So which sound is in that example? W, 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 w. Okay, so now let's look at the second example. Billy baked big buns. So what is the sound in that example? B, 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 B. Can you think of any other examples? But please also remember that the words have to make a, sen uh, a sentence and the sentence have to make a meaning like our examples below. Wandile wanted warm water. Okay, so now let us move on to our next example. Oh, sorry, uh, figure of speech. Okay, so the last one is onomatopoeia. I know that is a very long word, but let's see what it means. Onomatopoeia is a word that sounds like what it is describing. I'm sure you have come across these examples. Click, bang, beep, meow. Can you think which sentences or which things make those sounds? Click, that could be a sound of a, a mouse when you're clicking. Bang, could be the sound you make after you close the door. Beep, could be a sound of the end of your timer meow we all know cats meow so I hope you have enjoyed the part one of figures of speech 
I will be bringing you more figures of speech next time. But for me, it's goodbye. See you next time. I don't know anyone who wipes away their tears with so much grace and tranquility as I do. As young as I am in a world that knows no kids, I have acquired so much knowledge and wisdom from my challenges. Trials and tribulations have passed by, but I told myself to never give up. The way I hold myself with so much assurance is really out of this world. The love I spread is nothing compared to the love I have for the woman in the mirror. Molweni, my name is Ukola Sapita. Last time you saw me, I was singing one in a million, but then I was told I can't sing. So Uta's God agreed to teach me how to sing. Let's go check it out. Hello everyone, hello, hello, hello. Hope you're good back at home. Um, today we're going to focus uh, on training our fingers on how to move on the piano using the scale of C. If you remember we did the scale of C, we're going to use that. We're going to try and do some arpeggios and also at our last um, uh, minutes we're going to try and try to come up with some nice melodies around the scale of C that you can make maybe make a song out of or maybe a lullaby for a kid or whatever so we're going to try that uh, remember you go to your middle C down that's your bass middle C up that's your treble I'm sure we know that by now so remember in your fingering it's one two three four five and then when you play your scale it's one two three one two three four five to get your eight notes so gonna do that now it's c d e f g a b c remember that's your scale now we're gonna try and do some arpeggios just to train our fingers on moving smoothly on the on the piano. So this is how it goes. With one rhythm, with, with not stopping. Let's try that again. So we're going to try and add some bass. With that, you can try and do it as fast, as fast as you can, just to get your fingers to move around. Going faster. And make sure when you play your scale, you don't um, miss your rhythm. If you choose to be fast, which is a maintain the pace so that your your fingers can be able to keep the rhythm while you're playing so now we're going to try and come up with some melody around the scale of c that is your c that is your one then you have your chord four again and then your chord five 
your G and then now we're going to add another chord that is your chord 6 and then go to chord 4 again chord 5 chord 1 so those are the uh, five chords that we're going to use to make a melody out of this scale. So chord one again, chord four, chord five, then you go to your six, to your four again, to your five, One, four, that's your turn around, again, chord one, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, two, three, four, six, one, two, three, four, uh, go back to four, three, you can play with those chords around you can start with your one or you can start with your six to your four and to your five uh, just to give you a pointer there um, your chord six it's A C E that is your chord six it's the one that gives the emotion and that changes the song most of the time. Uh, so that is your chord six. That's A minor. Just to do the the, the turn around again. Instead of going to your one, you can go to your six. That is your A minor, your new chord that we just added on the scale. So again, oh, let's, let's try to do it faster this time. See you next time. Goodbye. Kamalam Nubila Nikila. Teddy Lepomi Yam, it's about time. Time is like a being that could lead someone to his or her success in life. Time is like a general waiting to end every hour in its path. Time is power to rejoice and destroy people's life. As a saying, time is not promised to anyone. That's time to me. It's still me, Ualiswa. I have a question. What drives gender-based violence? In some instances, it might be fear, anger, or even boredom. Our gender-based violence educationalist, Andy Siwe Mbelikani, will put us on the front seat of what drives gender-based violence. Warm welcomes. I am Andy Siwe Mbelikani, and once again, I bring you education and enlightenment on all things gender-based violence related at the comfort of your home here on Quarant TV. Today, I want us to look and talk about what it means when we say gender-based violence is a human rights violation. So rights 
are these ethical and moral principles that have a legal dimension rising from the need that each and every individual needs to live and enjoy a decent life that includes a life free from violence so human rights are inherent rights given to every human being regardless of race sex nationality ethnicity religion or any other status in this context human right violation would be you not fully living your life because you are not respected because you're not protected or you are discriminated against or you are unsafe meaning you might be experiencing violence so here is a list of not all but some of the rights when they are violated they result in gender-based violence the right to life this right states that everyone has a right to life to live and no one has a right to take life not even the state so in the cases of femicides the killings of women and girls by their partners or strangers or the murder of people that person is violating the right to life the right to equality this right states that everyone has a right to equality and to be treated equally this means that you cannot be discriminated against your sex gender or sexual orientation amongst other things such as religion age disability and many the right to dignity everyone is inherent to dignity and everyone deserves that they are degraded dignity is respected. When someone belittles you or humiliates you, they are violating your right to dignity. The right to be free from slavery or torture. This one is self-explanatory. So someone could own you like a piece of property, you could be living in their premises and you'd be working and without getting paid. And that person would be then violating your right to be free from slavery and torture. This could involve human trafficking. So this would be your physical abuse, even sexual abuse. The right to education and work. So everyone has a right to basic education, even adult basic education and further education. And so if someone denies you to go to school, that is a violation of your rights and also when it comes to work you have a right to work for who you want to work for and no one should force anyone to work for them so that would be forced labor and that that person would be denying you or violating your right to work and also if someone does not want you to work that may result in economic or financial violence the right to personal privacy no one even the state has a right to search your house your property or possessions that you might have without following the correct legal channels this includes opening your mails or reading your cell phone messages that person if a person does that they are violating your right to personal privacy the right to freedom of safety and security. This right basically states that everyone has a right to be free from all forms of violence. So the minute you experience any form of violence, it could be physical, verbal, emotional, all form or any form of abuse, then that person is violating your right to freedom of security and safety. The right to be free from cruel and unusual punishment. So even if someone could provoke or do something bad, they still have a right to be free from cruel and unusual punishment. Freedom of expression. South African citizens have the right to freedom of expression. You can write, say, and paint whatever you want, but your freedom of expression should not violate any person's right in any other way. So how you express yourself should not be harmful or discriminative against another person.
those were some but not all of the rights that when they are violated they could result in gender-based violence. I hope you enjoyed today's colorful episode of Quarren TV from music, gender-based violence and figures of speech. Until next time, I am still the host with the most. Like you know, I always say, it is not over until the curtain falls. Cheers. Goodbye.